Bill and Jalen, 2013 MBA Preview. The preview continues. We are in the top seven. Jalen, we're in the top seven. We finally made it, getting close to the finish line. The Nets of Brooklyn. So let's see what their uh, fan base mindset is heading into a promising season. <laughs> Looking good, Billy Ray! Feeling good, Lewis! <laughs> See what happened here, Jalen. They're trading places. Very nice. Once upon a time, they were Billy Ray. They were living on the streets. Now, they're on the beach. There's a speedboat. They traded places with the Knicks, potentially. Hence, the Nets willing to spend $87 million yes. in luxury tax. Yes, and they were uh, Peter this year. They're gonna eventually spend more money on tax than I think any team has ever spent. Well, let's see what the Nets did last summer. They did a lot. They added some dudes, some dudes you might have heard of. First of all, they ripped out the heart of the Celtics. The Kevin big Garda ticket! Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. They got Andre Karolenko. We're gonna get to that in a second. But I'm looking at Sean Livingston. Big comeback in the preseason. Yes, indeed. 6'7 guard playing for a coach and Jason Kidd who was a big guard in his own right, a couple of years removed from a knee surgery. He played some quality minutes with the Cavs. He looked good last year. Yes. And that was somebody, he'd gotten waived during the season by Washington, maybe? He bounced around, landed in Cleveland, and gave them good minutes. You, I like him, too. You heard it on this report first. He found a home with the Nets. Yeah. And Jason Kidd. He's I agree. gonna be a productive player. Look who they lost. They didn't lose a single guy who, who could have helped them win a playoff series this year. Chris Humphreys, we know his issues he had with his double-double and the Kardashian curse. Are we calling it a Kardashian curse Absolutely. Now? Have you seen Miles Austin lately? No. Okay. That's it? <laughs> That's your evidence? Miles Austin and Chris Humphreys? I mean, Lamar Odom. Ooh. Lamar Odom might be your best evidence for a Kardashian <laughs> curse. I'm just saying. So this Nets team, they're going to be in the conversation of teams that can win the East. But here's a problem with that old roster. Mm. And I love Darren Williams and Joe Johnson, the best backcourt in the league. How many games do you sacrifice during the regular season to allow P Pierce and Garnett to rest and you give up seeding position? But look at that bench, though. Their 10th best player is Reggie Evans. Reggie Evans was playing crunch time for the Clippers in the playoffs two years ago. Like, all, I trust all five of those guys. I know, but it's not trusting those players against five and below in the East. Mm -hmm. is trusting those players against the Heat, the Pacers, and the Bulls. Couple of things I like about this team. I like the combination of Lopez and Garnett together. That's like a real high-low. Garnett doesn't want to be in the low post. He likes to be near the foul line. I like that combo. I think Paul Pierce is gonna have a great year, and I actually voted for him for third-team All-NBA last year. You're not putting him and Garnett on the Duncan schedule. You're saying, 67 games a year, 28 to 30 minutes a game, keep their minutes under about 2,000 for the year. Pierce has never had a situation like that where he's been able to pace his minutes. Also, did you see that, that quote he had about he's been a little slump in the preseason, and he was saying it was because he never had this many open shots ever. And I, like this is the best team he has ever played on with the exception of 08. That's the only time he's been on a team that was this loaded. I think he's going to be great this year. When he talks about missing no shots, it's not necessarily that he's not he doesn't have the ability to make them. They're right. just coming different. Well, like he, he said he was used to he's used to shooting with somebody like this or coming off a screen or being off balance. He's like, oh, now I have the wide open 18 footers. This is weird. But also he's used to being a primary scorer with the ball and or catching. distributor. Right. He's a second, third, sometimes fourth pass in the half court and or option on a specific play. Well, what do you think about Darren Williams, who I have serious questions about as a, as a leader, um, as somebody who could be the best player on a team? Now you have these two forceful personalities, Garnett and Pierce, coming in. And Williams, likes he likes to be a franchise guy. He's an Olympian. Do you see him taking a back seat to those guys? The best things to happen to Darren Williams at this point of his career was KG, Paul Pierce, and Jason Kidd. And do you look less at him because of that Bulls series last year? You lose a game seven at home to Nate Robinson, Joakim Noah on one foot, no low dang. 
That that goes on his NBA gravestone. I'm sorry. It does, but not just him on the left side of all of their chests. That's why they made substantial changes. Right. Anytime you have an owner that says, I want to win the championships in, a, in the next handful of years, or I'm going to punish myself by getting married, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> I'm rooting for the Nets. Let's see Zach Lowe's sneaky big question. <laughs> Did Karolinko bury secret barrels of rubles in the New Mexico <laughs> desert? That's a, that's a Breaking Bad joke. You don't watch that show. No, he must add another big question. Will KG be spry in May and June? This, to me, is the big question. I was looking at, at uh, Tim Duncan's minutes last year. So Duncan played 69 games, got 13 off. They, you know, they would rest him on the back-to-back -back stuff. Probably played, you know, 27, 28 minutes a game. In the playoffs, he played 35. Played 21 playoff games, 35 minutes a game. That's what they're going to need from KG in the playoffs. So how do you get there with him? At this point of his career, him and Tim Duncan are asked to do different things. Tim Duncan is still asked to be a primary scorer mm. to the point where game six, had they gone and win the championship, the reason why I was pulling my hair out that Coach Pop didn't have Tim in is that he only had, and I'm being sarcastic, 32 points right. and 17 rebounds. Yep. Like, he showed up to play. You're not going to need KG to give you those minutes. Yeah, but if Boris Diaw wasn't mean, those in numbers. There, LeBron James wouldn't have gotten three wide-open threes in the last 30 seconds. I agree. What? But but that goes to my point. If you're going to rest them all season like they did, if you're going to play them 30-plus minutes in the playoffs like they did, why rest them at the most important time of the season? You know what I'm going to do if, if I need one rebound to win the title? <laughs> I'm going to bench Tim Duncan. Now, I'm going to play the seventh <laughs> best player of all time in that situation. Oh, this seems like, speaking of all guys, I think it's time. Clairvoyant Bill. Oh, yeah. Clairvoyant Bill has two comments to make about this team, things he sees. One, Paul Pierce, monster year for him. I, I agree. think it's going to be one of those super efficient years. Last year, he played 32 minutes a game. Post All Star game, he was 19 and 6, 5.6 assists. 49% field goal, and that was running the entire Boston offense through him because Rondo was out. I think he can get to like 18 points a game playing like 28 minutes a game. Easy, because yeah. he's going to be a catch and shoot. Shooting threes. A recipient. Wide open threes. And also, the defense now is going to help off of him. Yep. Something that he hasn't seen happen. And now all of a sudden, you double teaming Darren Williams on the pick and roll. You committing the extra guy to Lopez on the post. Name me the last great low post player that Paul Pierce played with. He hasn't played with one. Well, he kind of technically did because Vin Baker, even though he weighed like 280 pounds and, and <laughs> might, may or may not have been sober for the games. <laughs> Claire Point Bell really likes this Brooklyn team. I think people are sleeping on, on Pierce and Garnett. I think people think they're these washed up old guys. Meanwhile, last year was basically just them. There was no Rondo. Who else was on that Celtics team last year? It was just them taking on the Knicks. Garnett had like 17 rebounds a game the last three games against the Knicks. He can still bring it. And see, less is more. You're asking Kevin Garnett to score less, which means you're going to get more defensive intensity, yeah. more he's, communication. He'll score 10 points a game. He's fine. More rebounding, yeah. more steals, more blocks. A lot of this. For lot, Paul yeah. Pierce, more efficiency, late game situation. Free throws at the end of quarters when you're getting a bonus. And also the leadership, because you think, like, Darren Williams, not a leader. Joe Johnson, quiet, doesn't say anything, not a leader. So you're, you're, you have a Bulls series that's falling apart, and those are your two guys with Brooke Lopez. That's how you end up losing a game seven at home. Those guys, I think the leadership that Pierce has, I saw it. I watched it. Him and Garnett, those guys are, they, this will be their team. And that's why I'm not that worried about Jason Kidd. Because I think when you have guys like that that can do a lot of the locker room leadership, you played with vets. You, you were on a team that had Reggie Miller, Mark Jackson, Chris Mullen. Like, you know more than anybody. When you have a, the, the dudes like that in the locker room, you're good. It's all about the bottom line when you have quality leadership and everybody's at the point of their careers right. where winning is the only thing. The Nets starting lineup... All of them make over $10 million a year. Yeah. That's the first time probably in NBA history that has been said. It probably is the richest starting lineup ever. I didn't even yes. think of that. You know who else thinks Brooklyn, Brooklyn could be a title contender? We talked to him, Kevin Garnett. Let's see what he says. Man, I'm so, I'm so hyped right now. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! See, I always felt deprived because 
There was a chance, Bill, had I stayed at Michigan for another year and Kevin Garnett would have gone to college. He was actually coming to Michigan. I've always admired his career and been a fan of his to the point where he's the one player yeah. that I always wish I got a chance to play with. Let's see Goldsberry's graphic on, uh, on the Brooklyn Nets. And he picked. Oh, look the at big this. ticket! Kevin Garnett. And I want you to look at the red in the 18 foot range. The two best people last year for front court, KG and Serge Ibaka, were the best two 18 foot jump shooters. And, by far. And here's some basketball geometry for the fans. He's now playing with a potential point guard that can average over 10 assists yeah. and around 18 points. Who he's he three point, who, Who's a three-point shooter who spread the floor. True. A, me, a medium-range shooter, plus can finish at the hoop. I like the geometry of this Nets team. Me too. Everybody Lopez does something down different. Low. KG's on the foul line. You got Joe, jo Joe Johnson and Pierce in the three. Darren Williams doing his thing, running a little high screen with KG. This team makes sense to me in my head. Let's see uh, why the triangle loves the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> Mikhail Prokhorov convinced Karolinko to sign in Brooklyn. How? So Karolinko, I think, was due $9.7 million from Minnesota this season, but he had a player option. He decided to pass up that player option and sign with Brooklyn for two years, $6.5 million. Now, Jalen, neither of us are great at math, <laughs> but would you rather make $9.3 million for one year or $6.5 million for two years? In NBA circles, that's called a wink, mm. wink deal. Well, let's see. I wonder if there are any ideas for how this might happen. You give him a private island. It's a possibility. Well, Karolinko, allegedly, when he was in Utah, had an agreement with his wife that he got one free pass a year. I enjoyed that. To sleep with any woman that he chose. And maybe he could do it on Prokhorov's yacht. Maybe, maybe he gave him unlimited use of the yacht. Does that violate the salary See, cap? now this is making sense. Oh, just the old-fashioned way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My Uzi uh, weighs a ton. Hold it. I have an idea, though. Um, I don't know if you remember the Sopranos episode where the Russian disappeared in the woods. I'm not here. You gotta learn to shut the fuck up. Uh-oh. Look at Karolinko shoveling. There's Christopher. Oh, <laughs> Karolinko's running, run, Karolinko! Get, Get your money! I actually thought Karolinko looked pretty good last year. I, as he's you know, a good, he's a good player. As you know, I always judge players by could they have played in the games that we went to, game six, game seven last year in Miami in the finals, because the intensity of those games, you either can handle it or you can't. Karolinko could have played 25 minutes a game in either of those games. And being 6'8", I used to either have the face-up advantage on people my height mm. or the size advantage over people smaller than me. So every time I played against Utah or Minnesota, I was guarded by KG or Kirilenko. So to see both of them on the same team right now, yeah. that's going to be some very good protection around the hoop. If they were to get rebounds, if Brooke Lopez ups his rebounds, he got to get more than four or five rebounds a game. Yeah, one, I'd, I'd like to see Brooke get more than one a quarter. Just seems like he's seven feet tall, maybe. Yeah. Maybe one and a half a quarter? That'll help. No, get to eight. Yeah. Get to he eight. You should be able to get to a quarter. When when the guy producing the show, Dave Jacoby, can get more rebounds <laughs> than you in an NBA game, and you're seven feet tall, that's a problem. Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah! Oh, no! Oh, my Lord. What they want. Got to give them what they need. So, Jalen, there's a picture coming that you haven't seen. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's always an uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> now that picture is classic. So at that point in time, it's the early 90s. And uh, Old English was the beer of choice. Mm. 40 ounces were a lot more popular. I'm a Miami Hurricane fan. Yep. These, those were my squads in the 80s. The guy uh, behind you, do we have a name? I'm in East Islip, New Jersey. In the boondocks. Okay. Hanging out with my homeboy, Paris Smith, and Das Effects. They were in the studio at that time. Neither, neither of them And one of guy. those gentlemen, that's his homeboy. Okay. We were playing Sega while they were recording. Okay. He doesn't look sober, the other guy. He had one or two of those adult beverages that I had. <laughs> All right, now it's time to figure out what is Miami's vice with the Brooklyn Nets. We covered some of this stuff already, veteran leadership, uh, 
Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce will not be afraid of LeBron James. They will try to get in his head. They will say really mean things to him during the games, right? Insult his family, bring up things from his past he probably doesn't want to be brought up. Don't do that to Steve Smith for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, don't do that to Steve Smith. <laughs> and actually, we learned in 2012, don't do that to LeBron James either because that led to his best game ever. Uh, but Darren Williams, uh, when he wants to be a franchise point guard, you would think that would be a huge advantage against Miami. And then Brooke Lopez on the low post with Chris Bosh guarding him. Brooke Lopez could, should be able to score on Chris Bosh. You would think they could do a lot of what San Antonio did successfully last year against Miami. Uh, get a little low post going, get a point guard who can create his own shot and shoot threes. That's the recipe. We saw San Antonio almost beat Miami for the title last year with those three things. But the problem when you go against the Nets is each position player is legitimate size for his position. So you have to guard Joe Johnson with a legitimate two because right. he's six seven. Same with Paul Pierce, who's six seven. KG seven foot tall, and so is Lopez. And Darren Williams is a big guard. You're going to like this analogy. So LeBron's trying to three-peat. Michael Jordan tried to three-peat in 1998. Team was running on fumes. Took everything they had to get past their Eastern Conference Finals opponent. It was the type of team that was created to give them problems, right? Rick Smith's a little Brook lopez -y. You had a whole bunch of perimeter guys who had size, gave Jordan and Pippen problems. You had good point guard play. Travis Best was killing them that series. It's the same kind of thing here. I think if Brooklyn is what we both think they're going to be, it's going to take a monster LeBron game. I wonder, do you think there's maybe an 80s movie clip that could sum up what's going on with this Brooklyn Nets team? I wonder. I wonder if I'd... We, we, it's a gimmick we really haven't used at all during these previews. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. This is Prokhorov. Greed is right. <laughs> greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures. 87 million in luxury tax. Yeah, greed. Greed leads to a $102 million payroll. Greed leads to me taking the NBA title back to Russia. Well, the Brooklyn Nets are number seven team in the preview, but it sounds like Jalen and I like them a little bit more. Number seven in the preview. Number seven, but I like Chicago. I like Miami. I like Indiana. I like Brooklyn. Fascinating season ahead. Stay tuned. Number six coming up. We're going to a small market.